Hello, I'm Enzo, and today I'll be playing TerraTech. In this episode of TerraTech Builds, I'm going to be going over aircraft carriers. Now, this is going to be a long episode because we don't really get to true carriers until the end. I thought I would start out with a history of my carriers in TerraTech. Now, at the beginning, we have this one. This was my first ever attempt at an aircraft carrier. And as you can see, you can actually land an aircraft on it. Pretty cool. I called this one Flight Deck 01 because it was meant to be a precursor to the actual aircraft carrier. Now inside there's really nothing special at all, just batteries and anti-gravity. And I was also learning that there were build restrictions. And this is Carrier 1. As I said, Flight Deck Zero one was just a precursor, and this one doesn't really have much extra. It just has some guns and some fancy hover tech on it, but it's unpowered, so it really won't really move right now. And it's not really that special. This is Flight Deck Zero 02. As you can see, there are immediate differences. Well, first of all, it's armored, and it's flying. And it's charged my tech. So my plan here was to build a flight deck that could actually, well, fly as well. This was an attempt to make a flying carrier that you could position up in the sky and then land your aircraft on. Although there are some issues with it and same issues with a bunch of my other techs exist as well. This is Aircraft Carrier Mark 1. This is supposed to be the finished product of Flight Deck 02. As in, the bottom is actually armored completely. I'll actually show you guys the internals. So what's going on in here is a lot of batteries, a lot of shields and repair bubbles, solar panels, to actually charge the batteries without needing a support tech. A bunch of propellers so it can fly. And some engine and some thrusters so that you can actually start moving forward. But there's still issues with this, such as the aircraft actually falls off. And just like the other one, it doesn't really fly that well. Still though, I was actually pretty happy when I finished this. I guess it doesn't really fly well for some reason. I don't know, I haven't messed with these in a long, long time. These were my very first aircraft carrier ideas. This is aircraft carrier B. Now, when I was looking through all my saved techs and going for the aircraft carriers, or flight decks is what these are, this is one of my attempts to make another flying carrier, but it never really happened. Now this tech is much different. This is called Aircraft Carrier C. This entire idea was based off of a tech I found on the Steam Workshop. I believe it was like Heli Carrier or something like that. But it gave me a great idea to build a carrier based like this, where it had these propellers and it just looks really cool in my opinion. There are also major differences here. It's incredibly heavily armed. Lots of actual anti-air cannons and plenty of missiles to go around. You can't really see much in the internals, but we have a lot of batteries, a lot of chargers, and a lot of anti-gravity. Now, this thing was actually built to be functional, and I'm pretty sure it still does. So let's try it out. You can very neatly park your aircraft in the side bays, but after we unanchor, it kind of floats up infinitely, but we can help it along. Now this is basically my best success at building a floating carrier, although it had issues too. I mean, if you are too unsteady, the Stabilizers will actually go haywire and make it flop left and right infinitely. Kind of like this, I can simulate it. 
But yeah, you're never going to recover from doing that. So probably shouldn't have done it because I want to show off the actual flight deck capabilities. But it is indeed possible to fly an aircraft off of this. But for the entire episode, I'll give this one warning. If you're building an aircraft carrier, you cannot have landing gear, which means you have to have wheels like this or these skids because landing gear has to be on the ground to function. And if your tech isn't low enough, well, you just won't be able to move. Anyways, while it's tilting constantly, let's see if we can launch. All right, now we're stuck, okay. Well, if it's stable, we can actually launch off. But there's no such thing as a steam catapult or any other catapult for that much in this game. So your techs have to be able to fly themselves off, which they usually can. Now landing is actually really easy. It's just this is a very tight carrier, so you have to be careful. But you can do something like that. So you can either try to actually land your tech or there's the easier option. Just go ahead and dive bomb straight into your tech. Allied techs don't actually take damage if they collide, which is pretty cool. But it actually hit us and now we're gonna fall because of the anti-gravity. I also mostly use my build beam to maneuver around the tech because it's, yeah, a little bouncy like that. Some techs actually don't have a good time landing at all if they have anti-gravity. And so they'll just like bounce straight off. You'll see that more later. If any of you have seen my last TerraTech builds video, you might actually recognize this. This is my aviation battleship. It works pretty well. But unlike the others, this one doesn't actually have chargers on the flight deck. It just has a flight deck. It is protected by repair and shield bubbles if it's powered, but it takes a lot of power to make this thing work. Still though, I was extremely happy with how this one turned out as well. Because, I mean, it has guns and a full-blown flight deck. So yeah, these were both attempts. BP-1 was an attempt at making another flying carrier, but they never really go through because I just can't get the stabilization to work. That's why I basically abandoned the idea of a flying aircraft carrier. And now we're on to aircraft carrier A. I know, we've been to B, the C, and then A. But, you know, whatever. So this is actually nothing. This is just the flight deck build for the actual aircraft carrier. The carrier isn't loaded yet because it would be way too laggy. I'll meet you there. If you can't tell by the pure decrease in frames, this is my first attempt at a real aircraft carrier. Its screenshot name is Aircraft Carrier A1 because it was based off of the A flight deck, but I call it the Beast for a few reasons. First of all, you don't get frames with it, and because it's a giant, giant thing. There's a lot more room to land. Once you land on it, this is just straight from loading it, you'll notice something interesting. A part of the deck is sticking up. I have to go to another save to properly explain all this. Alright, to explain everything, this is Aircraft Carrier A1, or a prototype. By that, I mean very early prototype. I've also had a few prototypes before this of what the elevator should look like, but I'm not going to show those because they're basically just the same as this. This is an elevator. It doesn't look like much, I know. And being a prototype, it's not perfectly leveled, but it's leveled in other versions. I'll show those off later. So how does an elevator work exactly? Well, I'll show you. Since this is my earliest version, I decided to go with these giant rotors and plenty of stabilization, anti-gravity, and batteries. 
Later versions also have repair and shield bubbles built in. How does it work? Well, you have to build them as two separate texts, first of all, and then carefully take them apart, hope nothing goes wrong, and get them carefully onto these long bumpers, or some other pole-like system. It was built as one tech, there was just one block connecting the actual elevator and carrier. I took the block away, it fell down into here, and so these aren't actually necessary once I added these kind of stoppers, but let's just go ahead and show it off. Now, you'll probably see a few issues with it instantly. It's kind of angled odd like that, and only on my newest version have I found a fix for that. And trust me, it's my fault, I'm stupid. But I'll tell you guys why later. It still works pretty well as a prototype to show off how this should work. So you get your aircraft on here. Now normally there would be something blocking that one block gap, but there's not in this version, so... Anyways though, that's how it works. And I actually didn't realize it goes all the way down. But I guess it does. I did something right for once. That's about how it works. Yes, I know, everyone knows how elevators work, but this is TerraTech. It hasn't really been done before. And I also want to say, I haven't looked anything up on how to build an elevator when I did this entire video. So there's that. I'll also note, you guys will notice that we actually have this little control panel but our control scheme is car. So I had to set my lift to one and three. That's just the keys I like to use because E and Q are used for strafe, which is going left to right, which is rarely useful, but that's kind of my standard layout for all vehicles. One and three are literally just the keys above Q and E. So really easy for me to press. My brain can remember it. I like it. And it's similar for a bunch of my other setups. Now, up and down arrow, I'm actually using a 60% keyboard, so I don't have those luxuries. I actually use O and L to go up and down, but I do prefer one and three. But for certain things, like for planes that use like rotors as their propellers, I use three and one for acceleration. That's just how I do. Let's get to something cooler though. You'll see a lot of friendly text here, and my frames drop horrifically. This is the same aircraft carrier A1, if I can land on it. There's no uh, elevator in the middle right now, it's actually at the bottom. This is a kind of one step further. It has all the armor plating on it, and the inside's filled with armor plating. Alright, to explain. The inside is filled with armor plating, not just to protect it, but if you had like 10 million attachment points, the game really doesn't like that and gets really laggy. Like 20 frames is actually really nice for a terror deck. Let's go inside. As you can see, there is a lot going on here. Now this was my first ever aircraft carrier that has an actual elevator in it. And with that came a few issues. First of all, I thought just put the elevator in the middle, it'll work perfectly. But the issue with that is you lose so much hangar capacity. You can't even use these sides. I mean, I think I have for these Super Hornets that you just like retract, you know, put the wings on the top and then you can fit them. But they get moved around in transport and it's a mess. But exact same deal here. And so this is the earliest edition of my elevator as well, with plenty of bugs, like I said earlier. Like it doesn't want to move right now for some reason. But that's okay. Let's get an aircraft. I'll just randomly select one. This seems to be a dive bomber or a torpedo bomber, I think. Because of the ridiculous amount of bombs on it. 
it has so many bombs, I think it even obstructs the landing gear. As you can see, up we go. Uh, kind of. Oh, I see what happened. I think the tail fin of this aircraft got in the way. Now, there's a striker currently in our way. We'll just go ahead and move it off the tech. I don't want to damage it. I mean, I know I'm in creative, but still. I don't want to damage my own techs. So, there's that, of course, where it bumps up and doesn't really want to fly. But this is kind of a... I don't know how to properly say it. It's a large plane that doesn't move very well. So, there's that. But it has a lot of bombs, and that was the entire point of me making this one. And we can see it on the way back. Now that there's an actual elevator at the top, oh, I don't, okay, we made it. I usually use the build beam to position my tech back onto the elevator. And then you go to elevator. You do have to go all the way back down. And it's in here. Now, the storage capacity of this one is very limited because, well, it's a huge elevator and the elevator's in the middle. It doesn't really help things. But you just kind of jam your aircraft in there and eventually it'll fit. All of these are just like random aircraft I have saved, all with different ideas and at different times of my history in this game. This elevator can push just about any aircraft. You usually have to use the build beam on this older model, but it can push the aircraft up, get it to the top, and these weird blocks, uh, can we not get an aim game? All right. Oh, these fillet blocks are what I use because they have like this curve that works very well with these blocks. So it makes it basically flush, actually. Which is one of my favorite parts of the design. And if you don't really see the big picture, though, is the fact that we have a working aircraft carrier in Terrasec. It has a flight deck, it has a full hangar, and it has an elevator in Terratech. These are things that have very rarely been done. So, I was, yeah, this made me happy as well. Here we are again at A1. Again. So, the development of A1 was a bit rocky. I didn't understand how the elevator should exactly work and how it should go in. So you actually have to place all the fillet blocks in manually. I don't remember if I fixed it in later versions, but... I think this is one of my newest versions of it, but let's just go. There shouldn't actually be an aircraft on it while you're starting it up, because that. It kind of off-centers the tech, but if you can get there. Now what you're actually supposed to do, you can do a bunch of stuff to do this. Uh, use some sort of block like this. As long as it's not like a solid block, I believe it's fine. And there is a tail in the way, right? I believe this is also a very early version before I built the stoppers. Yeah, it doesn't go up all the way. In this version, this is one of the newer ones, this has built-in... Alright, this is gonna get interesting. I'll just take the flight deck. I'll just take the elevator instead. So these things I built have fillet blocks as well, just for looks, I think. And they kind of fit down in there. First of all, we're stuck, so let's 
I believe we're stuck on an aircraft somewhere. Yes, it's this tail fin. This is why you don't make large aircraft. And we're stuck again. Okay, so it kind of works. Proof of concept. That's all this truly is, is a proof of concept. Let me go ahead and load another save. Whoa, where are we? Well, this is the finished version of Aircraft Carrier A1, also known as the Beast. It's the same one we showed earlier, just in a different save, and it's kind of weird. Oh yeah, I don't think you're supposed to use 100% speed. Yeah, because it starts to do that and you'll fall over. So that's one of the biggest weaknesses. Although it is pretty fast for an aircraft carrier. When you do move, you actually have to keep the elevator all the way in its little cage compartment. If you don't, it kind of derps out and will fly away. It's pretty interesting. You can also see here some improvements I made are these chargers so that you can charge your techs while they're inside. Again though, this is the same design, but you'll see a few different things with the elevator. The fact that it kills my game when I try to use it. And a few other things as well, of course. You'll see we actually have double of these bearings. These are what actually let us get on the poles. But these are actually the wrong poles to use. There are radical research poles and those are the actual ones you're supposed to use. And if you don't put anything at the top or any stoppers, well, you just fly off. And very good luck landing in the exact same spot you came from. Because that'll happen. Alright, well, I've shown off all the proofs of concept for Aircraft Carrier A1. Let's go on to the next one. This is Aircraft Carrier A2. This was built as a light aircraft carrier, meaning it's smaller and less armored than A1, which was a actual aircraft carrier, which was a full-size aircraft carrier. But this project is completely unfinished. The whole purpose of this one was to figure out a new way to put in the elevator. The elevator in this one is pretty similar actually, but the major difference is it's built inside and the fillet blocks are already in place. So what really happened to this one is honestly I just got frustrated with building aircraft carriers. And the main reason is they're turned off now. But for some reason, the hover would always hover, I believe it's to the right side, like it is now, and I couldn't fix it no matter what I tried. And that frustration just led me to quit the project entirely. But you can see some noticeable differences. First of all, there are solar panels inside of this aircraft carrier, which shouldn't work, but video game logic. So you can actually recharge your tech on the go. And that was the major purpose of this. A1 actually requires a support vehicle or a charger to recharge its batteries. And if you don't, it's just a sitting duck. We've taken off the other five block. These are purely just to connect the actual elevator and aircraft carrier. You'll always notice that the game lags really bad and we are going to let me stop it. Alright, we mispositioned the elevator, but I think I can fix it. That was the major issue with this build as well, is that working like it does. Oh, it's on the poles. Once it's on at least one pole, it'll kind of snap to all the others. So now we're using these reticle research poles. These are what you should use. 
The issue with the Geocorp bumpers is that they are a perfect fit for the bearings. And that's actually why I originally used them. But uh, you guys kind of saw what happened with the first two elevators. And it actually wasn't noticeable at first until I started doing a lot more testing. But the reason it's okay on the first A1 is because it's such a small distance to go up. You guys will see later in the video, but we should be good now. And we're stuck, and this happens. It's one of the parts is stuck in here somewhere. But now that we have actual poles that fit, it's a perfect fit. Uh, other issue with these aircraft are that they'll do that. So you do have to put some sort of restraining things on the side. I usually do, but yet again, got frustrated, didn't like this. You can also immediately tell it's a smaller elevator, so you have to position your tech properly. And I don't think strikers will actually fit, which this is a striker. Should have explained that earlier. It's an aircraft I just built one day and it ended up becoming my favorite aircraft. This is the one Mark II, and it is my favorite out of all of them. It's a really slow plane, but it's pretty powerful and really fun to fly. Anyways, let's go down. Now, yeah, we'll get stuck a lot like this, so you kind of have to, and I think I just messed it all up. I think that was another major issue with this build. Oh. I'm also recording this live, so I'm playing while I'm talking. So you guys can hear me and probably hear my keyboard and mouse. But yeah, okay, there's no saving this. Let's try to get the tech off. Now you'll actually notice this tech is too high. So you gotta take off the wing. I usually replace it and put it back later. Another thing I didn't even realize until now is the entire aircraft carries like a gray. I'm using a paint mod to do that. I just thought it would look cool to have something besides the Better Future and Hawkeye Black. And I'm not going to say that the black aircraft carriers aren't beautiful. It's such a nice deep black color. It makes it look so good. I just wanted something else for once. Alright, so I actually got the elevator to fit properly, somehow. We're stuck again, but let's see if I can't get another aircraft up. So this also being light aircraft carrier means a lot less storage space. And I don't think the tail fin's gonna make it, so... Kinda looks weird without the tail fin, but whatever. And boom. Now, it's only because we're going up so fast, it actually, one, gets stuck, and two, kind of launches the aircraft in the air. It's also because the Strikers have anti-gravity in them. Actually, the anti-grav isn't on right now, so it is just the pure force of the launch. This is a full-blown aircraft carrier. The first two, of course, had many issues, but this one, I've done a lot of testing, and it works. Better than the others, at least. And the first thing you'll notice is the double layer hanger. So we have two layers of hanger storage, which means a lot more aircraft can be fit into this carrier. Not to mention, it's also huge. It's 63 this way and a very wide this way as well. The elevator system has been improved like crazy. I'm using these reticle research poles instead because they're just the tiniest bit smaller than the bearings, which means they can wiggle around and not get stuck. I'll show you guys. For setup, it's actually the easiest, technically. You just have to go get the medium pole. You have to build bean immediately so that you don't fly off and 
because if your elevator leaves this platform, you're never getting it back on. Trust me, I've tried. But that's about it. Now, yeah, sometimes you get stuck a little bit, but it's still a work in progress slash proof of concept. It does work. Now, getting up to the top doesn't work all the time, but that's just because of how the system works. I also learned that these blocks that I've been using are called fillets, not fillet. Who knew? Then I'm using these Hawkeye blocks on the top, and it's kind of weird how this works. So these can go easily through the fillet blocks. Well, usually. I think I kind of like how it actually gets stuck there. I could fix it, but I like how it gets stuck there because you can actually now dock on the second floor. Now, it's not convenient for the first floor, and if I really don't like it, I'll probably change it. And it kind of does get stuck. Huh. Okay, so I did a quick little fix to the elevator because for the longest time I thought it was fine, but my recent tests show that it doesn't actually work how it should. Oh, that works better. Got stuck a little bit, but it seems to be flush with that ish. We'll call it flush because it's really hard to get stuff like this right. And I hope we're not stuck. Alright, that might need to be ironed out in a second. But that's the elevator. Let me get tech for you guys. So, this is Striker Mark 2. The Striker 1 Mark 2 Jet Engine Edition. And it's because it uses these awesome new Geocorp jet engines as its, well, as its propellers. And as you can see, this thing gets almost double speeds of a normal striker. So, I like it a lot. These new jet engines are really cool. You've also probably seen them on the actual carrier. And that's not how you land on a carrier. Close enough. Actually, not terrible. So now let's bring the elevator up. Now, elevator is always going to be called CB Retrofit number two, or whatever you name the tech number two. And that just has to do because it's split off from the main tech. And we'll just bring the striker on here. Now, you can actually have it go either way, but I think this way is better because the tail, I believe, gets stuck sometimes. So you can even just reduce the power to zero and it'll actually start falling because this is absolutely zero gravity. And from here, I actually usually take the larger planes just straight into the top hanger and you can go ahead and park it. We also get a nice view of what the actual interior looks like. It's pretty simple. I just use these Hawkeye 4 armors to kind of create less attachment points because if this was just pure attachment points, it would be really laggy, just like the other carriers. Then I have repair and shield bubbles and anti-gravity on this side because there's a lot more substance to this side than, well, the giant hole in this side. So it had, it used to have a tendency to flip over, but I think it's good now. There's also chargers. So you can actually service aircraft while you're here as well. And if you summon one on the ground, it'll charge it up and you'll have anti-grav on your tech. This tech is powerful enough to not require anti-grav, but I still have it. That's one of the properties of a striker plane. Okay, so my last few carrier prototypes have been absolute garbage at one thing, mobility. They were basically bricks and this thing used to be a brick up until recently. But I'm pretty sure I fixed that. Now, yeah, it looks bad. You'll also notice one thing I forgot to mention. I call it CV Retrofit because it is a complete retrofit of my old aviation battleship. Yep, that's the hole for it right there. And I just tore off the top. I was just originally going to make a one hanger carrier. And the hangar was actually supposed to be really small. 
I got the inspiration from the first carriers in the real world, like Hosho and Langley. I wanted to have a small hangar, but large flight deck and actual guns about here. But then this idea came to me. I thought, alright, one hangar is cool, but what if you had two decks to it? And that's how this came to be. So first of all, now you don't want to go too hard on the <laughs> power here because it will kind of tip the tech. It has happened, I think. I don't know if it's fine now, but it has happened. This tech, like I was saying, is actually really maneuverable. Let's see. I mean, I don't recommend going over anything that isn't completely flat because I've had issues. Yet again though, work in progress slash prototype slash proof of concept. It can be done in Terratech. You'll actually see we're turning. Very slowly, but carriers turn very slowly. And the only reason we're actually turning is because of these propellers on each side. If those weren't there, we wouldn't be turning at all. Or it would be a very, very slow turn. So let's say we're done turning. Let's straighten out for a bit. I also have these as kind of a rudder system. I think our top speed... Oh. I guess it's around 44. I think the old top speed used to be like 43. And stopping isn't an issue. There's actually a stabilization computer in here, so it'll stop itself. And the stabilization computer is the actual reason I don't have a anchor in here. And the reason I don't have anchors is because it would make the tech bounce if you either used a ground anchor or sky anchors. They're kind of weird. And if it bounced, this tech could get out and it would be a mess. So you've moved, you brought your aircraft. I'm not too sure about the aircraft falling out of this. I haven't had enough in here at once to do that. I'll test that in a little bit. So you'll mostly be using your build beam to position your tech. So there's a few ways you can do this though. The normal way of course is just get the elevator. Now this is tricky. You can attempt to position the elevator properly, or you can just slide the tech out onto the elevator, or you can just slide the tech out and go wherever you want. We'll try this option first. Now, you don't want to go too fast, because it will catch and bounce your aircraft up. But just like that, oh, I guess we're flying off. I was going to build beam and position it, but that's all right. Now, I'll go ahead, I'm pretty sure this place is loaded. I don't remember clearing this in this save yet. Let's see if we get some turrets. There we go. The purpose of a striker is to just quickly strike, take out an enemy, return home. This model actually has way more battery capacity than the other ones. I know, I stuttered on my words there. But let's go ahead and try to land. Landing is actually really difficult, just like in real life. So I know I'm doing something right there. That was actually a really good landing. You can try to land it, like actually, but that's really difficult. And it's actually surprising. The carrier stayed in one piece, as in it didn't separate horrifically when I uh, unloaded it. So now we'll just go ahead and build beam back over to our little elevator. And this is actually a new version of the tech. I recorded a segment with the old one, but then I realized it was absolutely garbage. And I bit my mouth. Yep. Anyways, the elevator was way smaller, so it couldn't fit the wings of a striker in, and 
it had other issues I needed to fix, so I just scrapped it, tore out even more tech, and came up with this design finally. So, as I said earlier, the tech will literally just fall with the elevator because of this is heavy and there's no gravity there. You can put yourself back in the hangar. But let's go ahead and try my second flight option. You can just go ahead and fly straight out. Another property of these strikers is that they normally fly completely level. I believe this one's doing good so far. If anything, it wants to go upwards, which since it's kind of slow at going upwards, it's actually really almost level. I have a completely level tech that I'm really proud of making. And this carrier is getting the most screen time because this is my greatest creation in TerraTech, period. I have created nothing else like this. If you don't understand, it's a marvel how it's made. First of all, it was another tech that I retrofitted. It's an aircraft carrier, which has almost never... Okay, so like, the most of the aircraft carriers I see are basically just flight decks that can move. That's all they are. This is a full-blown aircraft carrier. It has an elevator. That's the biggest defining feature. You have the ability to move and store techs between levels. Pretty amazing. You guys might be wondering about the armor on this thing. Well, let's go ahead and test that. This is the tech we'll be using against our carrier. There's going to be an episode dedicated to this, so I won't really get into detail about it. But it's called Purifier, and that's for a good reason. Now, it's kind of weird how this is done. But you have to change a bullet to enemy, just because. And I think you'll actually target the elevator. That's why I got on this side. And so the cab, I believe, is in the middle somewhere there. So that's where the guns are targeting. And let's just see what one barrage does. Now, before I fire, these are the most powerful guns I've found in TerraTech so far. And there are three of them, so they'll wreak some havoc. But actually, not terrible. The armor can actually take one hit from this. Of course, the blocks are all heavily damaged, so they'll take time to repair. But there's still the decks are the hangar inside, the deck of the hangar, is still protected. That means it hasn't been damaged, you can still get your aircraft carrier, your aircraft out. And now we've lost aggro, I guess. Or may not. I don't know what it's doing. Let's fire again, and I think we'll hit the elevator this time. Even if we do damage the elevator, it's still actually working. So you can have like one last chance to get aircraft off. Because there are three attachment points still. I believe even if you have those two in the back left, I think you'll be fine. I haven't really tested damaging the carrier, because that's not something you want to happen. Oh yeah, now it's dead because I lost the little bottom parts of it and the poles on it. Let's finish it. Although the carrier does a really good job at recharging the batteries. Alright, we got it. You can still just fly the text out of the hangar, of course, which is really cool. So let's try to get a bow hit. Or, I mean, there's not really a bow, but we'll just pretend there is. And it's actually really fast. I forget about that sometimes. Alright, I'm gonna stop it for a second just to inspect the damage. Wow. <laughs> so, we've blown a hole right here, but it hasn't hit anything really important, so that's a good sign. 
aircraft in here would still be safe. This, I'm a bit more concerned about. Aircraft are usually in the back though, so I think that would be okay. Because these parts aren't armored at all. That might be like a future change to the carrier. But yeah, for this whole plate, there's no armor. I'm just saying, if you want to hit the carrier hard, hit it here. But you usually won't hit that. You'll be hitting the sides. That was kind of my intention. None, well, actually, yeah, none of the propellers have been damaged. Actually, it's missing an armor plate there. Actually, yeah, I don't think you can. Oh, yeah, it is missing one tiny one. Pretty cool. You guys didn't come here to watch me inspect an aircraft carrier, though. You wanted to see it blown up. I understand. Because I want to see it blow up, too. I want to see my frames drop. So it seems like my tech actually can't keep up. So we're going to build Beam Magic. Oh, I hit something. Oh, no, it's still moving. See how badly. Oh, the armor's still holding. I forgot just how powerful the armor on this thing when I made it was. I have created monsters in Terra Tech. Especially once you guys see this tech. This thing is an unkillable monster. It truly is. Ooh. But we uh, made a giant hole in the side. That's probably not good. And now the juicy batteries are exposed. Let's see if we can actually kill them. And it's tipped. That's not a good sign. And the batteries are blowing up. That's also not a good sign. Oh. Yeah, general rule, once the batteries go, a tech is dead. What exploded on me? Huh. Yeah, um, so after you destroy a tech like that, your frames return to nothingness. Because the game is trying to calculate the fact it's going to get even worse now. That there's an attachment point on every single little block. And each one is its own separate entity. But when it's an actual carrier, it's just one. Two if you're counting the elevator. Alright, let's reset and do some more testing. Now that I've finally gotten this thing to land, you'll see its issue. It, uh, the landing gear doesn't pop up. That's an issue. That's just because this tech is way too high off the ground. Well, at least the top and the top hanger. The bottom hanger, though, does seem to work. But here's the catch. We'll bring it out onto the elevator and you'll kind of just see what happens. At a certain point, it does retract the landing gear because it actually believes you're off the ground. Well, you are, but you're not in the air yet. So good luck. That's one of the only downsides to actually building a carrier like this is you have to redesign your text to use normal wheels. Okay, I was about to start loading a bunch of planes in here to test capacity, but the elevator got stuck. So one simple way to fix it. Oh, that, all right, I didn't hit it. You just gotta hit it and it'll become unstuck. For the final production version, I will replace those with the rounded edges so that it doesn't get stuck anymore. But for now, I'm just going to see how many techs I can fit in here. After a lot of work, I finally kind of have an answer to the question, how many aircraft can you fit in here? Now, I didn't bother doing the lower hangar because I would need even more aircraft. And I've kind of exhausted my supply of different types here. The answer, well, this is technically 10 in there, but 
but I'd say it's around seven or eight. Uh, size really does matter when it comes to aircraft. There are a few, like there's like that one. True small supplier. Yeah, that, it hardly counts. And it doesn't really strike or have any weapons or anything really. Actually, the rest are strikers. So yeah, there are about nine strikers or striker variants in there, let's say. Let's go for a trip. I actually have never tested out how the aircraft react to being in here. I have once, but yeah. Also, we... I keep dropping a block like that behind me. I've seen it happen before. I don't know why. Maybe something like keep hit. Nah, I don't know. But actually, it's holding up surprisingly well. For turning, what if we try to come to a sudden stop? That's not that easy on this, because we come to a nice smooth stop. Oh, but once there's no pressure, all... They just disperse, I guess. Try to go back to the original spots. Interesting. And, somehow... The Cursed Striker 2 actually stays on deck. It also can't fly off properly somehow. Let's see it again though. Because it's actually kind of cool to watch all the aircraft and then they dissipate. Somehow, the Mark, the 1 Mark 3 is staying put. Actually, yeah, let's go backwards. I know we won't get as fast speeds as going forwards. I think there are more forward ion drives in there. But we're not going to... It's not bad. About 32. Cool. I'm actually surprised how well that worked. Now, you always want to have your elevator probably not at like 100% power. You can do less around like 30. But you just don't want it flying up and down the whole time, then it'll hit the strikers and it'll be a mess. Cool. Let's get a striker or two out of here. Yet again, I think the easiest way this right is just go ahead, take it out onto the elevator with the build beam. I'm interested to see how well the 1 Mark III does. All right, well, it bounces it up multiple times, but I'd say we're good. You just build beam, get it onto the center. I painted these neat lines to kind of show where to fly off. Because I think the sides can be store, can be used to store more aircraft if you're stationary. I'll have another video about all my strikers another time. This is another one of my favorites, mostly because you don't actually need to charge the batteries. It has enough power to fly without anti-gravity. This is going to be about the end of the episode. And to kind of summarize what I've been doing is I have an aircraft carrier. That's just like crazy for terror tech. What else? It has two hangar decks. It has a fully working elevator. And the link to it. To, for the Steam Workshop will be in the description if you want to try it out. I will warn you though, you need a beefy computer. This thing, yeah, it's putting me at like 20 frames-ish. And I have a really powerful computer. Not the newest, but really powerful. Now, I won't have links to the other two because, well, the other two aircraft carriers, they're prototypes. I mean, this is more like a test type, if you will. Because the knowledge I learned from building the first two accelerated my understanding of how all this stuff works. And not even that, I've spent, I don't even know, I don't even want to know how many hours I've spent working on this in total, if you count my first two as well. Because my first one, I probably spent a good I, I forgot what it was, but I felt like it was somewhere around 30 to 40 hours figuring it out. 
First, making the elevator. Second, building the flight deck, making it all work together. And third, completing construction of the full aircraft carrier. Once I learned, yeah, it was too laggy to actually use, I scrapped it, worked on the second one. Second one didn't work anywhere how I wanted it to. You okay there? I mean, I guess not. That's new. And the third one is the finished product of all my learning. I reskinned it and, uh, yeah, I chose yellow because it's not blinding like that. But I also forgot to mention something I really should say is the only thing you will need if you want this aircraft carrier in your terror tech world. Well, you'll need the R&D pack. And that's for two reasons. First of all, I think it only works in R&D with just how complicated and it can only move on flat surfaces. But it's because the most important elevator parts are in R&D. Well, radical research, which is R&D basically. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun building this. Like, this is one of my favorite builds in TerraTech of all time. All my new TerraTech build videos and just general new stuff I build are my favorites. I hope you enjoyed the kind of history to my aircraft carriers and flight decks in this game. Anyways, this is Enzo from Luke in the Gaming, signing out.